I want to start this morning by asking you a question. Who here in this building this morning believes in prayer? Another question. Who here in this morning, in this building, believes in the power of prayer? Now, <clears throat> how many of you are wondering why I'm asking two different questions? They're basically the same question. Because they're not the same question. There is a difference in believing in prayer and believing in the power of prayer. There are many people out there that don't believe in Christ but they believe in prayer. They believe that prayer is an option, usually a last resort. When all else has failed, they ask people, usually those people are their Christian friends, to pray. But they don't honestly believe in the power of prayer. Those who use Prayer is a last resort. Don't understand the power of prayer. That's why to the believer in Christ, prayer is not the last resort. It's the first thing we do. But many Christians don't believe in the power of prayer. They look at prayer as a way to communicate their needs, wants, and desires to God. They want to tell God how they want it to go, how they think it should go, what they think should be done. But they're not really looking for an answer. They're like those people that you have a conversation with and they talk all the time and they don't want to listen. They spill their problems out to you, but when you give them advice, they just go and do what they want to anyway. That's how some Christians use prayer. While it's good to use prayer for that kind of communication, we don't need to limit our prayers to that kind of communication because when we limit our prayers and the purpose of our prayers, we limit the power of our prayers. Today we're going to look at how we can turn every prayer we pray into a powerful prayer. Robert Morgan wrote, <clears throat> and I don't know, some of you may have stayed in hotels like this. He says, I once spent the night in a crumbling hotel in Porto Alegre, Brazil. A friend and I ascended to our room high in, high in the building in a tiny creaking elevator. From our window, I saw the slum spreading out before me, and I felt uneasy. That evening, I prayed, Lord, save me from any danger of fire. You see that we're at the top of a dilapidated hotel with nothing more, which is nothing more than a fire trap. There isn't a fire station near, and I can't see any fire escapes outside the building. Lord, you know that this building would go up in flames in a second, and at this very moment it's probably full of people falling asleep with marbles in their mouth. By the time I finished praying, I was a nervous wreck. I hardly slept a wink that night. The next morning, as I evaluated my evening, I realized that my bedtime prayer focused on my negative feelings rather than God's assurances and promises. And I learned an important truth. Unless we plead in faith, our prayers can do more harm than good. I never thought about prayer that way, but after reading this, I can see his point. This morning, I want to talk about how our faith can bring the power out of prayer in ways that we've never even imagined. This morning I want to talk about the power of our prayer. Now I've told this story before. Y'all may remember. There's a church in Texas that had been praying, praying, praying for rain. Well, they decided they were going to hold a prayer meeting for rain. One person showed up with an umbrella. 
They didn't say how many people were there, but there were more than one person. One person showed up with an umbrella. Hmm. They come to pray for rain, but they didn't expect God to answer their prayer. All right? <clears throat> no, I'm not going hunting. This is what I wear when it snows. Mm -hmm. And I go outside to play. So guess what I'm praying for? <laughs> guess what I came prepared for? Okay, now I know it's not going to happen today, but they're talking flurries at the end of the week. So hey, as long as it's a white Christmas, I'm good. But I'm prepared. <laughs> Praying in preparation. Praying with expectation. Praying without doubt. It's funny that that happened to be what our Sunday school lesson with teenagers was about this morning. Doubt. But when one person shows up to a prayer meeting for rain, bringing an umbrella, that tells me that only that one person had the faith that God was willing to answer their prayers. Only one person showed up to that prayer meeting understanding and believing in the power of prayer. Everybody showed up believing in prayer, but one person showed up believing in the power of those prayers. James chapter 1, verse 6 through 8 says, But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, talk, Blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is the double-minded man, unstable in all that he does. So we pray we need to believe and not doubt. James tells us if we doubt when we pray, we're unstable in our faith. When we pray and we're unstable in our faith, we think, well, maybe God can. Maybe God can't. Or we think, well, maybe God will, or maybe God won't. And you can add whatever you'd like to that. But we come with little faith that what we're praying for is even worth praying about. Like the waves of the sea, we go back and forth and back and forth on whether we believe that God can or will answer our prayers. James tells us that when we think like that, we can't expect anything. Don't expect to receive anything from God because in essence what we're telling Him is we're telling Him that we don't believe in His ability to answer our prayers or we don't believe that He wants to answer our prayers. Now there was a boy in the Bible that we're told about who was tormented by an evil spirit. The disciples couldn't even cast out this evil spirit. And the father of the boy came to Jesus and told Jesus if he could heal the boy, would he? To which Jesus responded in Mark chapter 9, verses 23 through 24. He says, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father ex exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Jesus responded to the question by repeating the question. If you can. What do you mean if you can? Are you asking, do you think I can? Or are you saying, do you know I can? And then Jesus followed it up by telling the man and telling us as well that everything it's possible for those who have faith. You see, not only can God heal, God wants to heal. Not only can God meet our needs, God wants to meet our needs. Not only can God answer our prayers, but God wants to answer our prayers if we believe. Immediately the father spoke out. 
He spoke out in faith. And not only did he speak out in faith, but he asked God, he asked Jesus to help his faith to grow. Help me overcome my unbelief. How often, when we pray, do we pray with the attitude, if you can, God. God, here's the problem. Can you solve it? If, if, if you can solve it, here it is. Otherwise, if you can't solve it, I'll do it myself. How many times do we pray like that? Sometimes we pray like that too often. How often do we allow our lack of faith to keep us from asking Him to help us overcome our unbelief? How often does our unbelief keep us from praying for the things that we know that we should be praying about? We need to ask God, like this boy, like this man asked Jesus to help him overcome his unbelief, we need to ask him to help us overcome our unbelief. To overcome our doubt. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, Jesus says, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, believe, but believe that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, I've never looked at a mountain and said, go throw yourself into the sea. But Jesus was telling us that we have the power through faith to move mountains. He's not talking about literal mountains like the Rocky Mountains. He's talking about the mountain that's in your way. Whether it's health, whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, whether it's family related or related to your friends. Jesus says, if you believe that I can handle this problem, you will give it to me and I will move that mountain out of your way. See, it's not us that moves the mountain. It's our faith in Jesus that moves the mountain. It's our faith in the power of prayer that moves the mountain. Jesus said that whatever we ask for, if we believe that we've already received it when we ask for it, we're going to get it. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And we, if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. And what that tells us is that if our faith is lined up or our faith needs to be lined up with it, then our prayers are going to be lined up with the will of God. And when our prayers are lined up with the will of God, our faith will bring about the answer to those prayers. Jesus and James and John, all three told us that when we pray about something, if it's according to God's will, claim it. Claim it as if it is already happened. And when we claim it, God will answer. Because when we claim it, and we're willing to claim it, it shows God that we have no doubt in our minds that He hears our prayers and that He answers our prayers. Now how many of you remember that song? How many of you are old enough to remember that song? By journey, don't stop believing. Y'all know that song, right? Let's sing. No, nobody? Okay. Well, okay, we'll skip over it. We won't sing. I won't make you sing. The kids loved it when I did it at camp. And that's kind of how I did it at camp. A song would pop into my head, and, hey, this goes along with it, and I'd start singing it. And they would crawl, like trying to crawl under a rock. <laughs> so let's do it. No, I'm kidding. Um, but prayer works the same way. Don't stop believing, don't stop praying. Just because God didn't answer my prayers today doesn't mean He's not going to answer that prayer tomorrow. 
We need to remember that God's timing is not our timing. God's ways are not our ways. We may be praying for something and God knows we're not ready. Maybe God knows that we need something better than what we're asking for. He has a better purpose, a better plan in mind than what we're praying for. That doesn't mean he's not going to answer. We may not like the answer, but he's going to answer. But if he doesn't answer today, that doesn't mean that we stop praying. We should always be praying. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's God's will for us to be joyful, thankful, and prayerful at all times, in all circumstances. If we do that, our prayers line up with the will of God, right? This means that we don't quit. We don't give up praying just because God didn't answer our prayers right here, right now. We live in a right here, right now society. Y'all have seen the commercials. It's my money and I want it now. If you haven't, you don't watch enough TV. Uh, especially early in the morning or late at night. It's my money and I want it now. Okay, people gripe about fast food because hey, it took me more than two minutes to get to the drive through Oh, I'm going to be late for work. i got an hour of lunch, but I'm going to be late. You know? We live in a right here, right now world. Our society, right here, right now. You know, when, what do we want? Whatever. When do we want it? Now. That's our society. That's not how God works. Just because God doesn't give it to us right here, right now, that doesn't mean He's not going to. That doesn't mean we stop asking. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, to be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Now this passage doesn't say, and I know there's people out there that believe this, that they believe this passage says that we only pray when we need something. We only pray when things are bad. And we only just pray for ourselves. That's not what this passage is saying. No, it says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all needs, desires, give thanks, and always keep praying for each other. Because here's the thing about praying for each other. If I'm praying for you, chances are you're praying for me. And that's because I believe in the power of prayer. You believe in the power of prayer. So we're praying for each other. So guess what? God's going to move. We are to keep praying until God answers our prayers. And then we're to continue to give Him thanks after he answers those prayers. Mm -hmm. But even if the answer doesn't come today, even if the answer isn't what we desire, because remember, our will isn't God's will, doesn't mean we stop praying. We're to continue praying, and we're to trust that God's will is going to be done. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8, and I actually got this out of the New Living Translation because I love how they worded this. It says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. When we keep asking, we're going to receive because... Everyone who asks, receives. When we keep seeking, we're going to find, because everyone who seeks, finds. When we keep on knocking, God's going to get annoyed and open the door. <laughs> keep on keeping on when it comes to prayer. Just because God doesn't answer us right here, right now, doesn't mean He's not going to. If the answer doesn't come today, pray again tomorrow. If the answer doesn't come tomorrow, pray the next day. If the answer doesn't come next year, keep praying. 
keep on praying. And when he does answer, give him thanks. Give him praise. Even if God doesn't answer according to our will, we need to trust that God knows best. That God's in control. God's timing is perfect. God's will is perfect. God's timing is not always right here, right now. No matter the answer, God's going to answer it. And when he does, we should always remember to thank him, to praise him, and to keep on praying. Never stop praying. Why? Because there is power in prayer. Amen. Prayer is powerful. It is important that we don't stop believing in prayer. But it's just as important as that we don't Stop believing in the power of prayer. Prayer, when it's just used as another option, has little to no power. But prayer that's backed by faith, prayer that's following God's will, is very, very powerful prayer. As a matter of fact, Prayer is so powerful. Prayer is life changing. In James chapter 5, verses 15 through 16, it says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Here we see the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective because it brings healing. It causes sins to be forgiven and it causes lives to be changed. Do your prayers bring healing? Do your prayers bring forgiveness? Do your prayers bring about life changes? If not, you need to check your faith in the power of prayer. And maybe you need to check your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because powerful prayer changes lives. Powerful, persistent, faithful prayer lives changes the lives of the people praying and the people that they're praying I want to take a quick look in the book of Acts Acts chapter 12 of how a persistent faithful prayer life can change a life in the book, in the book of Acts in chapter 12 we find a story of powerful prayer I'm going to give you a quick synopsis real quick says, there was a king in Israel whose name was Herod not the same Herod that was king when Jesus was born. But he had killed James, the brother of Jesus. He threw Peter in prison. While Peter was in prison, awaiting certain execution, Peter experienced the power of prayer. In Acts chapter 12, verse 5, it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So this church, church, understood how faithful, persistent prayer is powerful. And they earnestly prayed for Peter. They did not give up. Because Peter wasn't freed today, guess what? They gathered and prayed tomorrow. Because of their prayer, something miraculous happened. Continuing to give you a synopsis of the story, while the church was praying, and Peter was sleeping, what does that tell you a little bit about prayer, huh? There's no right time to pray. There's no wrong time to pray. You can pray while others are sleeping. As Peter was sleeping, the church was praying, and an angel showed up in prison and woke Paul up, removed his chains, and let him out of the prison. Let him through locked doors, past guards. They were awake. 
through closed doors, locked gates, and into the street. Peter thought it was a vision at first, and then he finally came to realize that God had just freed him from prison. So he decided to go to the place where the church was praying and knock on the door. Remember what we just read, keep on knocking, right? Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Because the servant girl, when she heard Peter's voice, she didn't open the door. She went and told the others that Peter was at the door. And because she didn't open the door, they said she lost her mind and she had heard Peter's name. So let's think about that for a minute. How many times do we miss the answer to our prayer because we're not ready? Because we're not waiting and watching for the answer. Here was Peter, who'd just been released from prison by an angel because of their prayers, standing outside, pounding on the door, because, you know, he'd been told, keep on knocking. Eventually somebody's going to come open the door. So he kept on knocking. And they didn't believe it. Have we ever missed the answer to a prayer because we weren't sure that it was God actually answering our prayers? Well, that's what happened here. Peter's outside. They've been praying for days. Peter's outside knocking on the door, and they almost missed it because they weren't actually looking for an answer to their prayers. But they finally opened the door, and there's Peter. And boy, did Peter have a story to tell about how their prayers had brought him out of prison. When we believe in the power of prayer, and we persistently and faithfully pray, what kind of story will we have to tell? See, when God answers our prayer, we have a story to tell, and we need to share that story of how God moved through our prayers. When lives are changed through prayer, we need to tell the story of how God worked. When the power of of prayer is experienced, lives are changed. When lives are changed, God is glorified. When we believe in the power of prayer, we will understand how our prayers, the prayers of a righteous, faithful, persistent per person, is powerful and effective. This morning I ask you again, do you believe in the power of prayer? Prayer is not just another option. Prayer is the only option. When we pray, we shouldn't doubt, but claim the answer even before we pray. Never stop praying. Never stop asking. Never stop seeking and be like Peter and keep beating on the door until God answers it. As long as our prayers line up with His perfect will, we can be confident that He hears us. And if He hears us, we can be confident that He's going to answer us. Prayer is powerful. It's so powerful that it moved God to send an angel to rescue Peter from prison. And it's powerful enough to move whatever mountain we are facing in our lives. Be the mountain today, the mountain tomorrow. Prayer, the power of prayer can move that mountain. This morning, what do you need <coughs> from God? What mountain is in your life? How do you need God to move in your life? How do you need God to move in the lives of your loved ones, of your family, and of your friends? If you need God to move, keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing in the power of prayer. And when you show up to pray, show up with your own breath.
Turn it upside down because God is about to fill it with blessing. As long as we believe in the power of prayer.